Hi, I'm Bernie Wild. And I'm Susan Wild. This video is about our trip from Portland, Oregon to Phoenix, Arizona. We did it in mid-December. This was our first major trip, so we wanted to take it slow and easy. So we did about two to 300 miles a day. Okay, about to shove off, leaving the uh, wet Oregon weather, heading south. There's Susan and Barkley. There we go. We had three routes to choose from. We could have taken I-84 down through Utah, um, 101 down the coast, which both would have been probably very scenic, but since it was mid-December and weather was a major concern, we chose Interstate 5. As you can imagine, there's a little bit of preparation that goes into a trip like this. In general, some of the things that we did was something that I like to do is fuel up before we hitch up. I take the truck and go and fill it up with diesel before hitching up the fifth wheel. I try to do this even while traveling along the way in so much as it's possible if I'm running low on fuel right about when I'm going to uh, set up camp, I'll go ahead and uh, unhitch the fifth wheel and take the truck over and fill up uh, fuel then. So anyway, like to fuel up before I hitch up. Uh, the other thing that we do is a rather thorough safety check. We go ahead and check all the tire pressure, uh, the lug nuts, the torque, uh, the tires themselves. We'll, we'll check all the lights, the brakes, the windshield wipers, and uh, especially leaving in December in Oregon when it's raining like that and yeah. everything. So uh, speaking of rain, the, the weather is the other thing that we're really mindful about. So. We go to tripcheck.com in Oregon and that gives us all the current road conditions as well as lets us have a look at the, the cameras up at the passes so we can see how the mountain passes look. Another thing that we do is we try to schedule the departure uh, away from uh, morning rush hour in big cities like Portland. So we, we did the best we could. We still run into a little bit of traffic there but it went pretty good. It went pretty good. So the first day was an easy day down the freeway. Uh, we stopped after 200 miles at Canyonville. They have a nice casino there, the Seven Feathers Casino, which we like to stop at casinos when we're traveling. They're, they're really good overnight spots. They have a, a paid uh, park there with full hookups and a pool. It runs about 40 to $50 a night. Um, they also have a really nice truck stop there for fuel and propane. We chose the free parking across the street. Um, they have a, a nice well-lit uh, parking lot. You can stay for up to five days. You can use your generator if you need to. Um, when you're at a casino, there's gonna be some dining options if you don't wanna you know, make a big mess since you're just gonna be leaving the next morning. So you can get anything from deli to a sit-down restaurant. Uh, so casinos are a really good, good option for uh, stopovers when you're traveling. Stopped in uh, Canyonville last night and uh, parked in their dry camping for RVs at Seven Feathers Casino. You can hardly see it now, but there's snow back behind those clouds there, so we're heading up into snow today. The Canyonville stop is a great way to end the day because the second day is going to start off with a few mountain passes. Some are over, just over 2,000 feet just after Canyonville. And then there's the, the big one that everyone refers to when heading south in Oregon in the winter, which is Siskiyou Pass that's just north of the California border. And all of this went well, and that was largely due to the fact that we did our homework before we left and checked the weather, checked the trip cams and the road conditions, and so it went off pretty good. Yeah, um, we thought we had made it through smooth sailing. We stopped at the rest area just inside of uh, the California border and had some lunch and then uh, discovered the uh, trip from Weed to Redding was actually the most dangerous driving. Weed can be very windy through that area and then down through Mount Shasta it was snowing um, and you, we really took it slow and you want to make sure to leave lots of room for the car in front of you um, and uh, once you get to Redding then <laughs> it's pretty smooth sailing. Yeah. yeah and we ended up stopping at the TA truck stop in Redding 
and it was a little tight in there so it pays to kind of check what you're getting yourself into with the size of rig that you have and also beware of bad advice we had one uh, person with the RV tell us that it was okay for us to drive from one lot into the other well it was nighttime and I decided I'm gonna get out and take a look anyway well that adjoining lot uh, was a two-foot drop off to get to <laughs> yeah. so you had to go over a, a, a huge drop yeah, and would, that would have been disaster it would have ruined our our entire RV I'm yeah. sure so once we got through that we stopped at another casino at the Rolling Hills Casino in Corning this time we opted for the paid parking it was $28 a night they have uh, nice pull through spots easy to get in and out of uh, they have a travel center there with the uh, showers and Wi-Fi a laundry uh, even a, a pet daycare there if you want to uh, check out the area or go into the casino and don't want to leave your pet so that's a, a good stopping point too so and that was also the the place that we made our decision whether or not we would continue down I-5 or take uh, Highway 99. We decided to, to take I-5 even though there's not as many services on that road. It is a little bit faster and more direct for us. So we opted for that over uh, more services and, and slower. Since we decided on taking I-5, the next logical place to stop is Santa Nella, California. Um, it's really the only place to stop unless you want to push on towards Bakersfield or the LA area. They have a, a nice uh, RV park there, Santa Nella RV park, uh, so we stopped there. <laughs> Yeah, and we ended up having to park diagonally across two spots and they kind of set it up that way for those with larger rigs. And because we were parked diagonally, we also had to unhook our, our fifth wheel from the truck because the platform drops off about a foot on a slope, so it would be uh, significantly uneven that way. Not all the spots are like that, but uh, a good number of them are. So. It's a little bit of a hassle having to unhook, but um, not too bad. Uh, it's a good location though. They're right next door to a grocery store. There's several places to eat just within walking distance and they have uh, several uh, fuel stations there, two truck stops and a couple of other gas stations. So it's a good stopping point even if you're going to be pushing on farther south. This was also where we needed to make our decision as to whether or not we would go over the grapevine on the outskirts of the LA area or to go over to Hatchapi Pass. We opted for to Hatchapi. It was going to be shorter but probably a little bit slower. It's scenic and there can also be some wind issues up there which we did not encounter but we used a wind app on our phone so that we could determine what the wind speeds were through there. We did get a little bit of wind but bit. nothing serious so it's good to check those uh, areas to make sure that it's uh, good to go through with uh, wind conditions. Another reason we chose to go over the Tehachapi Pass rather than the Grapevine is that you bypass all of the traffic problems with the LA area. So that was uh, definitely a bonus for us because driving with the fifth wheel, traffic is not very much fun. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we just took I-5 down to the uh, Highway 58 cutoff at Button Willow and headed east. To Barstow. And in the Barstow area, we ended up staying at the Shady Lane RV Park. This was kind of like just ended up there because it was, it was getting late because we pushed all the way from Santanella to Barstow, which was our longest day. It was a little bit more than we had planned to do. It's not that we couldn't, it's just that we didn't want to. Yeah. So anyway, we stayed at the Shady Lane RV Park. When we arrived, it was dark. And one of the things that I like to do is to park outside of a park before I go in and I walk through it and make sure that everything is, you know, gonna work out for driving a big rig in there in the dark. And so I, I did that and then they kind of guide you into the spot. The spot that I got into was a little precarious, but it, it did work and it actually worked very well. And uh, in the morning when I looked at the whole place, it seemed like it was probably the only spot that I would have chose in the entire park. In fact, two spaces down from us was uh, 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 probably a 40, 
three foot somewhere in their uh, fifth wheel and the owner was actually directing this person out uh, right into uh, the, making the back end hit a tree which caused significant damage to the fifth wheel I mean it just destroyed the, the that last uh, quarter panel there yeah, on, on the end yeah it was it was pretty bad and so anyway, uh, I definitely try to put my own eyes on, on things when, especially when going somewhere I've never been before, rather than just take the word of someone else. Right. Another thing we didn't really anticipate is, uh, since we were in California, that it was actually still very cold there. It was below freezing when we arrived, so even though the park had full hookups, we weren't able to hook up our water. So we, that's why we always travel with a little fresh water in our tanks uh, for situations like that. Yeah, definitely. And this is also where we made our decision as to whether we would take I-40 over to 95 in California and take 95 uh, uh, south in California or to take 40 into Arizona and take Arizona's Highway 95 South. We opted for Arizona's Highway 95 South because we wanted to go through Lake Havasu City and Parker and Quartzsite, which we'll show you a little bit about in a future video. We traveled on to Parker, Arizona and stayed at another casino there, the Blue Water Casino. Uh, we checked out the paid uh, RV park there. It had very narrow spaces and some of the spaces, the sewer hookups were right in the middle of the spot. So it would have, you would have had to you know, climb under your rig to hook up the sewer, which seemed very impractical. They were also a little spendy, about 40 to $50 a night. So we just drove up to the main parking lot and parked in the free parking area. Uh, very close to walk into the casino to eat or um, whatever it's a little bit on a, a slant but you can find spots that are, are level towards the end or some people parked sideways so that worked out great yeah and this uh, area is along the Colorado so 95 basically parallels the Colorado for a while and uh, the casino's right on the Colorado River. So this was some of the best scenery that we'd seen along this route since leaving Oregon and Northern California, yeah. with the exception of the Tajpi Pass, I thought yeah, was, it was pretty it was nice. Yeah, very scenery. nice. Um, there's also other options there. There's two um, state parks and a county park and several other RV parks right along the river there between Lake Havasu and Parker. There's also a lot of BLM land, so if you just want to pull over onto some of the BLM land that's another option Definitely. so our last leg was from Parker to Phoenix and there's another option there you can either take 95 straight down to I-10 go through Quartzsite which is what we did and we discovered that at this time of this video Interstate 10 from Quartzsite for the first 45 or so miles uh, towards Phoenix is extremely bumpy a lot of potholes they really are doing some work on it but it's not uh, not, done, not yet. done yet so another thing that you can do is from Parker you can take 72 and you'll hit I-10 after all of the bad road yeah it essentially bypasses it's, quartzite as yeah. well and that can be kind of busy in yeah December, at certain so. times of the year it can be very very busy so uh, once you hit uh, Interstate 10, then there's two rest areas between there and Phoenix, so you can uh, take a little break there. Yeah, definitely. And this is probably a good time to mention, if you have pets and you're used to leaving them out in, in, in your area, there may be other things to consider when you're in Arizona letting your pet out. There are poisonous creatures, as one of the rest areas that we pulled into reminded everybody to not let their pets go in certain areas because there could be rattlesnakes and scorpions and things like that. And our pet, being that he was born in Oregon, had no clue about all these pokey, poisonous things <laughs> down here. So we kept a very close uh, tie on him and to make sure that he didn't get into anything that he shouldn't or re would regret. <laughs> yeah, for sure. This leg of the trip was definitely where we experienced the most traffic since leaving the Portland area, which was the Phoenix area. So you want to make sure that you schedule a round rush hour there as well. We hope you enjoyed the video. Please share and subscribe. Uh, go to wildonthego.com to comment and connect with us.
Thanks for, Thanks watching. for watching. This video is about our trip from Portland, Oregon to Phoenix, Arizona. We did this in mid-July, and this was our... Shit, <laughs> did I say July? <laughs>